for this lab in particular, students send, can tend to get a little bit um, goofed up on what exactly they're supposed to be doing. So I like to go through this slab in a little bit more detail. And you haven't done it before, so it's to be expected. Okay, really there's four things that we're doing within this lab, and it's all basically just practice doing aseptic technique. So sometimes if students make a mistake or they take their cells from the wrong culture, it's really not a huge deal. We're just practicing, we're just trying to see if we can get cells growing in a new culture. So an error doesn't necessarily mean you have to start all over again. So be sure to ask me if that happens. All right, so our first goal is to use aseptic technique. We talked about that in the last video. And we're going to start a new broth culture and a new slant culture from an already growing broth culture. Okay, so you will pick up a stock test tube and that stock is just going to be labeled mix. Okay, and remember the stock cultures, it's, you know, typed on a label and stuck on there. Um, so it's going to be labeled mix. That mix is actually two different organisms. It's, uh, let's see, Staphylococcus aureus and uh, Serratia marcescens. Okay. All right, so you can see why we allow you to just uh, label that mix, because <laughs> that's kind of a lot to write on a test tube. Okay, so remember, that's a broth culture that's already growing, so that culture is going to look pretty cloudy. All right, and your goal is using your wire loop uh, to transfer cells from that mix into a broth culture that's sterile. Remember, you'll get that from the back bench. And also transfer some cells to a sterile slant. Okay, so you're going to inoculate a new broth and a new slant from that mixed stock culture. It's a good idea to label both these tubes before you start out because as we'll see, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to inoculate a new broth and a new slant from a different culture. And, you know, once you inoculate those, everything looks the same. So remember, you're going to label this um, right on the tube there, your initials, your section, and you can just label these mix, okay, instead of writing Staphylococcus aureus and Serratia marcescens, <laughs> okay. Um, a little bit about these organisms, Staph aureus is one that we're going to use a lot. And that's an organism that does cause a lot of different kinds of infections, a lot of skin infections. Uh, MRSA is a strain of Staph aureus, methicillin resistant Staph aureus, uh, that's resistant to a lot of different antibiotics. This strain is not going to hurt you. All right, so, you know, don't drink it or anything, but you don't need to be afraid of it either. <laughs> okay, so we'll be using that a lot. Serratia marcescens, this is an organism that we don't maybe, I think we use it maybe in one other lab. Uh, it's more of an environmental soil organism. We like to use it here because the colonies, when they grow up, have a nice pinkish red pigmentation. So the Staph aureus is kind of a creamy, almost yellowish color, and the Serratia is red, so they have a nice contrast. You can tell the difference between them pretty easily. Okay, so our goal here is to just get both those organisms growing in your new broth and your new slant. And I'm going to demonstrate exactly how I want you to do that inoculation, paying attention to aseptic technique. So that means not putting this cap on the bench after you take it off, uh, flaming the lip of these, these tubes, um, how do you swirl that uh, loop around in there to inoculate broth. Uh, I'll be demonstrating that in class. But next class, there's a little data table in your book. It's on page five, and we just want you to say, yes, I had growth. No, I didn't have growth.
Okay, so pretty straightforward there. So we're going to do the same exact thing. We're going to start a new broth culture and a new slant. Uh, this time we're going to inoculate from some solid media. All right, so you will have a stock plate, or you can pick up a stock plate of uh, Staphylococcus epidermidis. That's an organism I think we use in every lab. It's a uh, normal, part of your normal microbiota on your skin. Uh, totally harmless when it's on our skin. Uh, and so we use that an awful lot. But using your loop, you're going to just touch a, a colony. Uh, don't, need to, don't need to do a big scoop there. You're just going to touch one colony. And once again, you're going to inoculate a broth and touch another colony. Uh, an isolated one, if possible. There's not always a ton of isolated colonies. Uh, this should be a, a pure culture over here, this stock culture. And you're also going to inoculate a slant. And again, before you do that, you're going to want to label your test tube here with your initials, your section. This time you're going to label it S. epi. Okay, because this broth and this slant will just look like, again, the ones that you just inoculated from the broth. So we want to try to keep all that straight. Okay. Um, one other thing your lab mentions uh, on page four, uh, point number three, it asks you to take a sterile broth and with your loop, dip in there and then transfer to another sterile broth. And then we're going to uh, incubate. Uh, the point of that, as you hopefully have guessed, this is a negative control. Okay, if you have good aseptic technique, if you have a sterile uh, loop here, you dip in some sterile media, hopefully nothing will grow <laughs> in this second tube right here. Okay, so that's just a negative control. If you're sloppy with your aseptic technique, then you might get some cloudiness in here, and that's not what we want. Um, I, this, this, doing this, I always tell students, is optional. If you want to do that, it's fine, but even if you did get a couple cells in here, we probably wouldn't be able to see them. <laughs> Remember, it has to be cloudy for us to see it. So, um, you know, that's good to think about, but I, I, don't, I won't require you to do that. Okay, and I forgot to mention, right, all these tubes we're going to incubate, and I'll show you what racks to put those in. I put them in our big walk-in incubator uh, all together. We usually incubate them at 35 degrees Celsius, which is pretty close to body temperature, about 37 degrees Celsius. And we usually incubate them for about 24 hours. And that's enough to see growth. Okay, so hopefully we'll get growth in um, both these tubes, both the tubes that we inoculated from a broth, and that's just our goal there. You will also be inoculating your first streak plate. And it doesn't really matter what order you do any of these things, but this is a really important technique. Uh, and we usually use it in order uh, to get isolated colonies. Okay, um, it's a technique in order to spread out the growth. Uh, and so we can tell if, if we get lots of isolated colonies, we can tell more easily if the culture is pure or not. Okay, so this is a technique that's used all the time, and you'll be doing some more of these throughout the semester. It's such an important technique that we have um, in your book, graphically, have a nice little picture on page six on just reminding you how the technique that we want you to use to inoculate a streak plate. It's called the four quadrant technique. 
There are other ways to do streak plates. We want you to try this way because it works pretty well. Okay, so here's your, uh, I think it's nutrient auger. It might be triptych soy auger that you're inoculating. But you're going to take your loop and dip it into your original, um, your stock culture of the mixed broth. Okay. And using your loop, and again, I'm going to demonstrate this when you're in class because we'll have plenty of time to do that. Using your loop, you're going to just streak back and forth really heavy on the top, uh, not quite a third of your plate. Okay, that's, that's quadrant one. The goal in quadrant one, just make sure that you have some organisms growing. Okay, um, so you're going to streak that pretty heavy. All right, after quadrant one, you're going to flame your loop. It's supposed to be an M. Uh, because after quadrant one, the goal is to spread that growth out a little bit. And remember, or maybe I didn't say, you're just streaking on the surface of the auger. Sometimes uh, your, your loop will poke down in the auger a little bit, and don't worry too much about that. But you really want that growth just on top of the auger. Okay, so I've flamed my loop. Okay, and then for... Uh, and you're going to have to let that cool a little bit after you flame it because that's going to be super hot. Uh, so I'll demonstrate that. Cool it for about 15 seconds. Uh, and then you want to just, again, streaking on the surface of the auger, grab a couple of streaks from that previous quadrant and then spread it out without touching into that previous quadrant. Okay. Once again, flame your loop. All right, for quadrant three, once again, scrape across um, all of that previous quadrant two. Hopefully you're getting the idea here. And then you're going to flame your loop. And uh, use right here. Then for the fourth quadrant, um, I tell you, students, what students tend to do sometimes, they might go like this or like this and totally miss that quadrant. Um, a lot of students, sometimes they'll do this. Okay, that's not good either because you're pulling cells from that previous quadrant um, all, the, all the time and you're not going to get the cells spread, off, spread out enough. Okay, so ideally you're just getting a couple streaks, remember, from that previous quadrant and then not touching it again. Okay, and that's your fourth quadrant there. Okay. So again, the goal is somewhere on the plate to get some isolated colonies. It doesn't matter if that's in quadrant two or quadrant four, as long as there's isolated colonies growing up at some point, that's the goal of a street plate. Okay. And I should mention a couple times I've had students do go through all of this on the lid of the Petri dish. Uh, remember, there's no media on the lid. So the goal is we have to have enough cells grow up so that we can see them. And that's going to be millions and millions of cells. So we want to put them on the growth medium. Okay, and then when we're done, again, we're going to incubate and we'll take a look at that next class. Lastly, the fourth goal for this lab is to inoculate a pore plate. Uh, there's some discussion that we may have you do a spread plate instead. Uh, right now, I can't tell you which it will be, but we will do one of either technique, and I'll just go ahead and explain them both. Uh, the streak plate, the pour plate, the spread plate, these are all techniques uh, to get isolated colonies on a solid, some solid media on a plate, okay? Um, with a pour plate, whether you're doing a pour plate or a spread plate, um, your book says to inoculate from the stock broth that's a mixed culture. Um, I'm gonna suggest that you use instead that broth that you had just inoculated.
Okay, now that's kind of unusual because, of course, there's not going to be very many cells in there. Uh, but that's okay because both of these techniques are typically, you, the goal is to count the number of colonies after you inoculate them in order to try to extrapolate numbers in this original sample. So if you use that original stock culture, there's just going to be zillions and zillions of colonies there and too many to accurately count. So if we use this broth that you just inoculated, then kind of a countable range. Okay, if we were doing a pour plate, that involves, uh, again, taking a loop full of your broth that you've maybe kind of finger tapped a little bit to shake up a little bit and inoculating these larger test tubes that we call uh, that we call auger deeps. Okay, and these are in the water bath sitting at 55 degrees Celsius. So we're keeping them kind of warm. Um, this is an, an auger medium that's warm enough not to be solid yet. Okay, so we would, again, take a loop full, uh, just kind of dip it in that molten auger, and then we would uh, immediately pour that into an empty petri dish. Okay, and swirl that around a little bit once it's in there, and then eventually, after a couple minutes, that will harden. Okay, and then that's what we would uh, incubate, and next time, hopefully, maybe just take a look and see if you mixed that growth up good enough. Maybe we could count the colonies if that was our goal. Okay, so with a pour plate, our colonies are not only on the surface, but they're also uh, embedded in the auger. So you could very easily tell the difference between a pour plate and a streak plate. Uh, with the spread plate, this is a method that we more often use when we do our cell counting lab. Uh, once again, take that mix that you just inoculated. And again, you're going to do one or the other of these. I think we're kind of leaning towards doing the spread plate over here. But again, you're going to take a loopful of that mix. Um, actually, not a loopful. We'll probably have you use a pipette and take one mil. <laughs> You've got uh, a little pipetter that, that's uh, in your bench. And oh, sorry, we're going to take out one mil and put that on an auger plate. Maybe it's nutrient auger, triptic soy auger, one of those. And then with a sterile glass hockey stick, you're going to use that to kind of spread that mill around on the plate kind of as best you can. Okay, and then we'll incubate it, and you then might be able to count the number of colonies when you come in next time. Okay, so again, you, you'll be able to tell a spread plate. That'll look different than a streak plate because a streak plate is this really distinct pattern the spread plate is the cells are going to be kind of all mixed around. Okay, so most likely you will be doing a spread plate. The other thing that I just want to mention also in this book there is written up some instructions on doing an environmental sample. Sorry, also within this lab exercise too. Uh, the environmental sample we will have you do a little bit later on, once you're kind of used to these techniques, uh, I'll, get, I'll get you to swab some surface from the lab or maybe on the third floor of Henry, and we'll see what grows up on a plate, and we'll probably take a look at that under the microscope as well. So we're going to do that a little bit later when it seems like we have a, a good time to do that. Okay, don't be afraid to ask questions.